joining us. My name is Ashley Okino and I am the Executive Director of New Bedford Art Museum Artworks and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Patron of the Arts Awards Ceremony. We are thrilled on behalf of the Board of Trustees, staff and volunteers to recognize and honor, well, I guess, fantastic patrons of the arts. Their work here in New Bedford across the South Coast can be exemplified from public art to initiatives, to education, and even working with youth across the community. And so I have the pleasure here of being with Gail Mandel. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Ashley. It's lovely to be here, and um, I really salute you on your wonderful work here at New Bedford Art Museum. <laughs> thank you. Um, and thank you so much for the honor. I wish Roger were here with me to receive this. He would have been so thrilled to have you single him out with uh, this award. So I'm feeling very much part of a vibrant community. New Bedford is thriving in the art scene and we are so pleased with the creation of DATMA, our nonprofit organization, to be part of the team. Wonderful. Well, and we're so grateful for your partnership, too, here at the museum. You know, since Statma was uh, really kind of up and going, I remember meeting Roger for the first time and kind of touring around town and talking about some wonderful ideas that we had for some summer programming, which ended up becoming different type of what we had envisioned, but fantastic, and that really turned into Silver Current. Yeah. And so we were just so thankful, and we were happy to contribute. Our little exhibition is part of that, and again, this past year with, with, uh, with Light and our uh, Pastoral Light exhibition in conjunction with the New Bedford Public Library, it's really been a wonderful synergy, and we really do look forward to continuing that relationship and, and seeing what comes next and, and kind of how you continue to change the landscape here of the South Coast, and so we're very grateful for, for everything that you've done. Oh, thank you. It is. It was quite a challenge uh, from a lifetime in the uh, established museum and art school scene, a career of being with uh, organizations, nonprofits, and the arts that were already established. It was a challenge to start up something new and also not be perceived as a threat in a community with a lot of other art uh, nonprofits. Instead, we found it to be very collaborative. So many of the nonprofit art organizations in New Bedford have joined hands with us and we've shared uh, projects around uh, a theme which we've established. In the first year when you mentioned Silver Currents was wind, and with that theme, we had that wonderful installation in Custom House Square. What we were hoping to do with some of the projects by bringing people from around the world to show their art here was to both stimulate tourism to coming into the city, but at the same time to have people uh, in the community be inspired. And what I love about some of the artists' we, work that we've used is that they've used what I guess I should say sort of unconventional materials. The silver current was made out of the same silver paper that is found in uh, candy wrappers. Oh, yeah. And yet it was this huge uh, net uh, that, that went over the park. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and then when we did um, the light installations, Sue Sunny Park came. She is a Korean artist, and she used chain link fencing, a very common material that you see 
wrapping around properties in town and she had light reflections from that. This year we just had a, an artist from Switzerland, Zamoon, who did an installation at the Star Store. Right around the corner, yes. Yeah. And it's, it's been a challenge to find places since we don't have a home like you do, <laughs> and soon to be an even better home. Here. Yes. But the, the UMass Dartmouth and Dean Jenkins has been so generous with uh, letting us use the window. Mm -hmm. So Zamoon uh, had done his installation with uh, unusual but very common materials, making our theme of water a sound sculpture out of cardboard and cotton balls. And we thought, boy, if kids could go in and be inspired that it doesn't cost a lot to do your artwork, but you can make something with a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. So Different ways of being creative. Yeah, and so now DAPMA is uh, moving into the next realm, which will be an expansion of our education program. Wonderful. My husband had been considered an artist's mentor, and we would like to have our artists that we bring into the community mentor as well and go through a lot of project ideas with the art educators in town so that we can inspire children and young people with creative problem solving. Oh, that's and um, so we are going to expand this education program and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk and rattle on about all of this but we're excited and yeah. we're hanging in there and um, we're happy to be part of this community. Well, and to thrive, I mean, we'll just acknowledge that DATMA, you know, you got started right kind of 2017, 2018 here in New Bedford, and right after you almost got your feet on the ground, they, they kind of kicked up from underneath you. So really kudos to you to yes. how you've reinvented and, and rethought yeah. about your museum without walls. Well, so. and we have a wonderful director, Lindsay Meesh. Absolutely. She worked for a while here. Yes. And um, we're lucky enough to have her as the art director, and she is so flexible and creative with how we show our art, where we show our art. And yes, it, that was another added challenge. We are approaching the next two years with the theme of shelter. And I know because of COVID, so many people have been affected by that, but we think of New Bedford as kind of a, a sheltering harbor. It was uh, mm. very instrumental in the um, uh, underground railroad um, abolitionist movement. Yep. And, um, I know you're giving the Historical Society an yes. award as well, which is well deserved. And so I think that this theme of shelter, we have some very exciting artists that we're bringing in. And so I look forward to sharing that with the community. Oh, we can't wait to see it. Thank yeah. you. So on behalf of the trustees of the Bedford Art Museum Artworks, it is my absolute pleasure to present you with this custom-made award uh, commissioned by the museum. Uh, artist Kim Berry made this, and she is from the Clay Trout Pottery, and she does have a studio in Hatch Street, and it was Kim's honor, really, to be able to make this oh for you. So it is our pleasure. Thank you so much. Enjoy. I will. <laughs> I love Rosemary, and the, <laughs> the pot that she created is stunning. Thank you very much, Kim. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to say that um, besides all of the wonderful commitment from the various uh, nonprofits in New Bedford, I also have so much gratitude for the friends and uh, people who make up our very important board of trustees. They have been an enormous, insightful, enthusiastic, generous group, and without them, we probably could not pull off what we've been able to accomplish in the last few years. I want to say that Nico Sullivan, who has taken over for Roger, has been doing a wonderful job, and under his leadership, hopefully DATMA will thrive.
it's magic to see it in New Bedford because I think it really creates a whole new dynamic that uh, not only projects what New Bedford is and has been, but what New Bedford can become. Well, in the middle of a pandemic, um, it allows for people to enjoy it on their own. They don't have to be in a closed space. As you know, right now, most museums around the world are closed and trying to figure out how to reopen. This is available for everybody, free. Hello, my name is Margaret Nash, and I'm currently on the board of the New Bedford Art Museum Artworks. As part of the museum's annual Patron of the Arts Award, it is my privilege today to thank Gail and Roger Mandel for all of their contributions to the art world in New Bedford and Massachusetts. As co-founders of Design Art Technology Massachusetts, their vision has been to develop a community of creative people. As renowned artists in their own right and leaders in art education, their passion for art and design education has opened up new horizons for countless young people. They have looked at art as a way of visualizing life's important issues and creating spaces in the world in which to ask life's ineffable questions. It is because of generous thought leaders such as Gail and Roger that the arts will flourish and survive. Thank you so much. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees at the New Bedford Art Museum Artworks, and it's my pleasure to be here today to help present the Patrons of the Arts Award to the New Bedford Historical Society. And I'm joined by Lee Blake and Allison Wells from the New Bedford Historical Society. So first, I want to congratulate you both. It's the New Bedford Historical Society's 25th anniversary this year and we at the art museum the partnership with the art museum has gone back pretty much since the early days right yes can you tell us a little bit about the the exhibits and the programs that we've partnered with you over the years so i'd like to introduce allison wells allison is is one of our board members but she's also been a very important part of us making sure that we tell the story of the history of people of color through art. Yes. So Allison, one of the wonderful things she did was our Hidden History Program. So you talk about that for a minute? Sure. Um, the Hidden History Program was amazing because what we did, we were teaching kids about the Underground Railroad and um, specifically in New Bedford. And what was the case was we had a historian teach the kids all of these histories, hidden histories, important um, landmarks in our history in New Bedford. And I was the artist. So after an hour of learning with the, the historian, I came in and did an art project with them based on what they were learning. And the fun thing is I was new to the area right, at that right. time, <laughs> just graduated from UMass Dartmouth. And I was learning all of those histories as well. So I was just there with the kids, bright eyed, bushy tail, just lapping up everything. So it was really <laughs> wonderful to see the kids get this wealth of information and I was getting it as well. So we were going back and forth and it was a wonderful kind of um, coming together of art and history. Excellent. So we've done a lot of programs together with Allison. I also want to mention the Black Spaces Matter exhibit mm -hmm. that we did that focused on the 7th Street neighborhood, but that was actually shown in Boston at the Boston Architectural S School. And it was a wonderful work communicating with UMass Dartmouth, with local artists, Don Burton was involved, who was with AHA. But all of us put together these wonderful photographs of the uh, African-American community that was involved in the Underground Railroad at the time, but they all lived on 7th Street. And one of the things that we've been able to do is connect the past of New Bedford 
with what's happening presently and also to create this new historic district which we're doing, which will be Abolition Road Park. So Black Spaces Matter, as we develop the city, we want to make sure that different aspects of the city, the cultural aspects, the North End, the South End, the West End, those places are all developed too. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little bit more about what to expect for Abolition Row Park this upcoming year? Well, we, we decided that we couldn't have the Johnson House, which is a National Historic Monument. Mm -hmm. We could not have that park faced with a lot across the street that's strewn with garbage. So we really just kind of worked with the National Park, we worked with other people to take over and kind of reevaluate what was going to happen in that neighborhood. And that's a historic neighborhood. There are 19 historic homes on 7th Street that are all in great shape. And they tell the story of a time when in the 1830s up to the 1880s that people in New Bedford were organizing against slavery and working as a major underground railroad impetus. So we made sure that we organized people, we bought the land, um, Abolition Row will now become the centerpiece of a park that will go for about five blocks all the way from 7th and Spring all the way to the Roach Jones Duff House. Allison, you have anything else you want to add? Oh, we um, also have the statue, uh, the statue of Frederick Douglass, so that's going to be huge and interactive where people can sit and have a conversation with Frederick Douglass and reflect on his life there. Well, when I moved to this area, I, my first place I lived was on 7th Street. Right. And at the time, I didn't know the history, but I, as I was saying, talking about hidden histories and the um, the program with the kids, I learned so much of the, the wealth of information on that street alone. I mean, I've seen some on, on the plaques, you have it, but we got more and more of that history, so it felt really good knowing where I lived and the importance of it. And the, the whole idea of, of reclaiming our history is that African Americans in New Bedford were really important players. They were running for office, they were voting. Frederick Douglass comes to New Bedford in 1838, and in two or three years, he's a registered voter because in Massachusetts, people were free. You know, they, they were, um, legislation was passed right after the uh, revolution so that people in New Bedford and Massachusetts did not have to worry about slave catchers. That wasn't the case in other places. Rhode Island, for instance, is a slave state and they're right across the border. So people were coming here and to work on the whaling ships. So I'd like to say that we're really excited about what's coming with Abolition Row and the statue of Frederick Douglass, but we're getting the patron of the arts for all the work that we've done over the years. So we have done some of the big exhibits. Um, we did a wonderful icon of the civil rights movement. We did a wonderful social justice poster show, Allison. Yes, yes. We did that, and that was really cool because what we did was we canvassed the community and said, do you have social justice posters from the last 30 years? So it didn't cost hardly any money. Mm -hmm. And everybody got to put in a piece or two of an event that they went to, a conference they went to, um, a demonstration that they went to, and it was wonderful. Allison, you did a poster for that? Yes, I did. And then we did the Pete Souza Obama exhibit, and just most recently this wonderful exhibit, Ruth Carter. Yep. We had some other ones as well. We had some really fun ones where um, we had the head, African head wrapping workshop. And it was interactive, and people could learn the benefits of head wrapping as well as the beauty, the fun of it, the techniques, right. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you are uh, the New Bedford Historical Society is involved in the Community Artist in Residence That's program right. that we That's have right. here. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for people who have been painting or doing craft work or doing um, hand work that really haven't exhibited before. So it's an opportunity for them to, to come out 
and be part of the art world here. And I, I see a wonderful picture in the back of Susan Costa's work, and I want to buy it. <laughs> but it's not on sale. Oh, I'm going to have to call her. But it, it's an opportunity for you know the artists, local artists in the community, to start showing their work. Really great. Thank you for, for being a part of that. And on behalf of the New Bedford Art Museum's trustees, we thank you for your continued partnership and hope that we can go another 25 years with you all. Yes. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Alice? Um, well, as an artist, I just want to chip in that it's always so important to have patrons of the arts. We need that help. We need that support. And um, it, it's really nice to see communities come out and organizations come out to help the arts grow. And that's why it's so special here in New Bedford. And let's welcome Ashley Okino, Executive Director of New Bedford Art Museum Artworks. Yay! Hi, Ashley. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. As Margo said many times, we are so appreciative of your partnership. And man, we hosted so many wonderful events together. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and one of the ones that we didn't mention that was the Frederick Douglass Award. Um, that was, oh, that right. was handed out um, right. to Dr. Jabril Kazan. Right. So want to also honor, honor all of the work that he's done and the work that you've done as well. So right here we have a beautiful piece that was commissioned and made by Kim Barry, and we're very grateful, and she's very grateful to present this to thank you. Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. It's been a wonderful partnership, and we know we'll be looking for our next big exhibit. Absolutely. Can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.